Assassin's Creed Mirage, as detailed by Ubisoft at the weekend, is set to return the series to its Middle Eastern stealth sim roots and signals an end to the Ancient World trilogy, which I still haven't finished. And it's no for a lack of trying, I swear to God. How many hours is that? Do you know how many rooms I could have finished decorating in that time? The stated goal of Mirage is to pay homage to the original game, jettisoning the endless RPG setup that the series has leaned into since Origins in favour of a more linear, narrative-driven action-adventure experience, with gameplay elements inspired inspired by AC1 but reimagined with modern sensibilities. For example, they're probably not going to make you do the same pickpocketing mission 500 times and the parkour likely isn't going to be annoying as fuck. But although AC1's influence on Mirage is impossible to deny, I mean, the people making it have said so, that's good enough for me, the more I find out about it, the more it puts me in mind of two much later games in the series, namely 2011's Revelations and 2014's Unity. And don't performatively throw turnips at me just for mentioning it, alright? Unity might have had some issues at launch, but that is a game of incredible ambition. Its rendition of Revolutionary Paris is one of the most striking and hyper-detailed depictions of a real place and time ever conceived of, and it is, for my money, a visionary masterpiece. Alright, that was a bit much, you can throw a couple of turnips at me for that if you want. Over the years, Assassin's Creed has been overhauling and refining its core systems to the point where the first game now feels so different, it's like hopping out of a modern hatchback and trying to drive a Mark 1 Ford Cortina and that you can be charmed by its classic beauty and even admire the elegant simplicity of its engineering. But after five minutes, you'll be absolutely begging to drive any heap of shit as long as it's got ABS and power steering. Although, these issues weren't lost on people at the time. Most people generally agree that the series didn't find its feet until the sequel, but in recent years, the first game has enjoyed something of a reappraisal and people have started to appreciate it for all the bold and brilliant stuff that it did. It is the progenitor of what we now refer to, sometimes derisively, as the Ubisoft open world action game, which has become an incredibly successful and popular subgenre, and half the games in it aren't even made by Ubisoft, because the other half are made by fucking Sony. And that's not even the full extent of the enormous influence that the first Assassin's Creed had and continues to have on the medium. It was also a watershed moment for representation of the Middle East and wider Islamic culture in mainstream video games. The Assassin Order is heavily based on a real religious order of assassins, who really did operate out of the fortress of Masayaf in Syria, and Altair ibn Lahad is more or less canonically Muslim. And this came out in 2007, at a time when the Middle East region only really existed in video games as a Call of Duty map, of which the less is said, frankly, the better. I'm getting a bit sidetracked here. The point is that the first Assassin's Creed is an incredibly special landmark game that deserves to be reappraised and celebrated even though it's subjectively the worst one in terms of gameplay mechanics and mission structure. Which makes it a really good candidate for a remake, which Mirage is not, but it's the closest thing we're getting for now, occurring in roughly the same global region, Baghdad is about a day's drive from Jerusalem, and featuring a version of the Brotherhood that we haven't really seen since that first game. This is an Eastern Assassin's Brotherhood at the height of its power. They've got bureaus all over the place, they're building fortresses. You'll get to see one under construction, the Persian Fortress of Alamut, which is, like Masayaf, a real place that really existed and genuinely was a stronghold of the Assassin Order. And it sounds like it's basically going to be this game's equivalent of Masayaf, a secondary location in which the protagonist, in this case Basim, yes, that Basim from Valhalla, is sworn into the Brotherhood and gets training in how to knife people and jump off things and all that sort of stuff. Also, if you know the Assassin's Creed lore, you'll know it's built on an ancient Isu temple. And I'm annoyed with myself for knowing that. As far as we're aware, this is the only location in the game outside of the thriving 9th century metropolis of Baghdad, which was at the time a real beacon of civilization that led the world in art and science and culture. And this is one of the areas where Mirage starts to diverge from the first game. People tend to forget quite how big AC1 was, as well as Masayaf, it featured three bustling cities that were a hotbed of conflict and intrigue during the Crusades. Jerusalem, Damascus and Accra, as well as the enormous kingdom map which joined them all up. Mirage isn't setting out to depict an entire region of the Middle East, its focus is on providing a detailed and realistic portrayal of 9th century Baghdad, according to historical documents and best guesses, because the city has been destroyed several times over since then. Of the 12 mainline Assassin's Creed games to date, only four have been concentrated around one city. Renaissance Rome in Brotherhood, Almost Ottoman Istanbul in Revelations, Revolutionary Paris in Unity, and Victorian London in Syndicate. And for my money, those are the games which have the most endearing sense of place, where you can feel an abundance of care being taken to do a real location justice with every cobblestone, every signature sound, every painstakingly recreated landmark that yes, you can climb. When Ezio arrives at the docks in Istanbul, not Constantinople, you can almost smell the spices mixing with the sea air. 
When Arno escapes from the Bastille and makes his way to Notre Dame, you can feel the crackle of revolution in the atmosphere, that intense, equal parts terrifying and exciting sense that it's all about to kick the fuck off, like Cardiff at 6pm on a Friday. Sorry, that's my closest reference point of not being in an actual riot. Mirage promises a return to the social stealth and investigation mechanics of the earlier games. The press release talks of an immersive and reactive city, the prospect of hunting for clues and gathering information before you can make a kill. If we're talking about investigative gameplay and social stealth reliant on the kind of extreme crowd density and architectural verticality that you're just not going to get in Viking Britain, then Unity and Syndicate are literally the most refined examples of that to date. And out of the two, Unity is better because it never makes you play as Jacob Fry. And also 18th century Paris is just nicer than Victorian London or any London, frankly. So although Mirage is aesthetically an homage to the first game and very deliberately sets out to bring the franchise full circle, I bet it'll feel a lot more like Revelations as a setting, and I bet it'll take a lot of its gameplay cues from Unity, which has a lot in common with the first game in that everyone thinks it's a load of shite and they're desperately wrong. For me, Assassin's Creed is at its best when the location feels genuinely connected to its real-world counterpart. When it nails that, it's like having your own personal time machine, or animus if you like. As much as I've enjoyed all 5 billion hours of the Ancient World trilogy, it was diminishing returns as far as that sense of place goes. I'm not mad at them by any stretch. Exploring Ptolemaic Egypt, Classical Greece, the haunting ruins of post-Roman Britain, which is the period of history I find most fascinating, these have all been brilliant adventures of mind-blowing scope and ambition. But as I look forward to finally finishing Valhalla after what will probably be 200 actual hours of my life, I'm very much in favour of Assassin's Creed reverting to a more bespoke, more curated mode of historical action adventure. Uh, I couldn't fit it into the script earlier, but see this character? She's definitely going to betray you, we know that, right? Remember this guy? And this guy? And this guy? Look, I'm just saying, the Brotherhood, it has a mentor who will definitely turn evil problem. Don't know what I'm doing with these. And no spoilers, but if Valhalla is anything to go by, Mirage is going to have a fair bit of modern day stuff going on. And I know people like to complain about it, and that guy from Forbes is going to write his article again, but it is a foundational part of the series that ties all the games together in a fascinating science fiction meta-narrative that beautifully and poetically reflects how history lives through us, guiding and shaping each new moment in time as our lives stretch into the future. Also, John Delancey's in those bits, and I quite like him, so you can deal with it. I'm a bit busy, mate, what are you after? What do you mean, they're actually taking the modern day stuff out? Are you joking? Why? So they're saying the people who like it are never happy because there's never enough of it, and the people who don't like it are always complaining no matter how much they diminish it. So they're going to make it an entirely optional part of the Infinity Hub for people who do want it, but take it out of the games for those who don't want it. So that's it then. After Mirage, the games are just entirely historic, and there's no more voicemails from John Delancey, and no more Danny Wallace showing up, and you being surprised because you forgot he was still in them, but it's a welcome reminder of when he was on telly in the mid-2000s, a simpler time, a better time. I mean, that kind of makes sense, actually. Where'd you hear about this? Eurogamer. Yeah, uh, brilliant. So they got the scoop on that, did they? That's um, good for them. Listen, I'm going to go, right? I'll, uh, I'll, I'll catch you later. Fuck! I've been Jim Trenker for VG247, and you should definitely like and subscribe, because if you don't, you smell. Check out the website, check out the podcast, check it all out. Check it out like it's Supermarket Sweet Man. I'll speak to you later.